Let's head back to 1666 for Fear Street Part 3. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. And today we're on to Fear Street Part 3, 1666, the third and final installment in this trilogy of Fear Street films. And, but they do set up for more films at the end of this film. And the director's even come out and said she would like to continue the stories. And there's plenty of stories to mine from R.L. Stein. So I can definitely see them continuing with these, but we'll see what happens. It seems that they're pretty well received by most people. I mean, these are not perfect films, but I've enjoyed them to various degrees, all three films. We're gonna talk about this one right now. Now, one thing that's constant through all three films is the direction of the all three films. Look the same, like they're directed by one singular person, and that person is Lee Janik. She was back again to direct this film when she directed the first two films. And this film's kind of split in two parts. The first hour takes place in 1666, and the last 54 minutes takes place in 1994 to resolve our storyline there. And I have mixed feelings about the first section, but we're going to talk about it. Now, the same actors are playing... All the actors throughout the first two films are in the 1666 part playing different roles. Now, Dina's character is in 1666, but she's Sarah Fair in 1666. And Samantha, her girlfriend from 94, is in 1666, but in this one she's a different character. Her father's a priest, and they're a very religious family. And that pretty much starts our witch stuff, okay? Now, Sheriff's Goods, long lost relative Solomon Good, is also in this film. He's actually a friend of Sarah's father and her. And Dina's character's brother from the first film, 94, Josh, is in this film as well as her brother in 1666. He's just playing a different character, different name. And they set up this little village. Um, it's a little farming community as they were happened to be back then. And one night, the younger people in the, the, this little village go out into the woods to have fun, to have a little party and get drunk and just, you know, have kid stuff or younger people stuff. And... Dina's character, Sarah, and Samantha's character from 1666, just like in 94, start out getting romantic in the woods and they get spotted by somebody. Well, all of a sudden the town seems like it's cursed. The food is going bad, the well dries up, um, the priest goes mad, and a pretty gnarly scene that happens in the church, I don't want to give it away, but it's pretty, if you're a horror fan, it's pretty badass in terms of a horrific scene, but it's disgusting all on its own right. I don't want to spoil for it. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. You'll know what, I talk, what I'm talking about when you get to that scene. It's definitely a highlight of the first part of the film. And they, the town folk seem to think there's a witch amongst them. There was a lot of witch panic back in those days, Salem Witch Trials being one of them. In England, they had their own witch hunt. Um, so this town basically is on a hunt for a witch amongst them because they think they've been cursed by Satan himself. And rumors start to fly that about Sarah and the, the priest's daughter in the woods getting romantic, which was foreboding back then. And right away, the one guy says he saw them and the town believes them and they want to hang both of them. Well, Samantha's character in 1666 gets caught right away, but Sarah gets away. And Solomon Good tries to help her out, but soon his secret comes to bear. Um, Sarah finds out that he is the one reading from the satanic book who this witch in the woods had. He killed her and took the book because he's always had bad luck, been looked down upon, and he thinks this is his chance to get right a lot of wrongs against him and to have a fruitful existence in this little town and take revenge on the townsfolk that have treated him so poorly. Now first he doesn't seem like he has any ill will towards Sarah, but she certainly wants to clear her name so she don't get hung from a tree. So there's a battle underneath his cabin. She finds the book and that symbol in the ground that we saw in um, the 1978 version, the story. And she stabs him and tries to go tell the town, but he shows up and says, she's the witch. He caught her and they hang her from a tree and kill her. And her, we see the part where her hand gets cut off, like we, they thought that was gonna solve all their problems. And we come to find out that Solomon Good was the reason why Sarah Fear cursed the town of Shadyside. But she actually really didn't curse the town. See, for the goods to have, be prosperous in this town, 
going forward, there has to be a sacrifice each year. There has to be one person that gets killed and they send out these demons who take over people and kill somebody. It, they really do set up and answer a lot of the questions that were set up in 94 and even in 78. Now, my, now, once we get to 94, that, that was my more enjoyable part. And I love witch cult stuff and even stuff in the past. I like those kind of films. But I got to be honest, the second part worked better for me. Once they went back to 94 and they, they hatched their plan on how they're going to sh stop Sheriff Good and what they have to do, they have to kill him to end this curse over Shadyside. Because that's why Sunnyside became so uppity and they have all the good luck. And Shadyside has been on so torn down over the years and had such bad luck is because the goods have been keeping them down to give themselves prosperity. So they set this trap in the mall. We go back to the mall like in the beginning of the 94 movie. And they set this trap with all the killers. They trap them in the stores and their, their plan is to get Sheriff Good there, cover him in um, Dina's blood, and all the killers will go after him. And it doesn't quite, it works a little bit, but not quite as they think. I don't give everything away. And then we end up at the, the witch's mount underground again. And finally, Sheriff Good is dispatched and the spell is broken. And they even show a small clip of now Sunnyside's having bad luck. And it shows that the curse was broken. Now Sunnyside's open up to the same bad problems that Shadyside has had, although without the murders. But because the murders have stopped now, the Sheriff Good was dispatched and the spell has been broken. But they set up at the end, they show the book, they left it there, why I don't know, and they show police tape, this part doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and all we see is two hands reach into the frame during the end credits, so watch through if you, if you haven't seen it yet, and pick up the book and take off, and that's the end of Fear Street Part 3, 1666. Again, the witches stuff in the beginning, the past stuff, I didn't mind it, but it kind of drug on too long, it wasn't interesting enough. Um, again, I think they were focusing too much on their relationship, which I know which is causes them to get hung for for what being a witch um, But it just drug on too long. It just took too long to get to the point I felt um, And I thought the 94 stuff was way more interesting once we got our information from the past and then now we have a way to solve all of our problems here I just think the past stuff even though I like that kind of stuff it just drug on too long. It wasn't interesting enough. The stuff in 94 was way more interesting. Once they get there, the pace picks up and we have, we go through our finale and I was satisfied with the ending for sure. I was kind of disappointed with the first hour, the second half. I definitely enjoyed a lot more. Although there are some good things in the first half, the set design, the way it's shot, the mood is all there. I love the church scene. You'll know when you see it. And I bought some of the answers they gave me, although I wasn't surprised that Sheriff Good or the Good family was in on it. There was always something off about him, and it's just confirmed what I'd already thought. Overall, I still enjoyed it. I think this is a step down from 78. I would say 78 is my favorite one of the bunch. Um, I would even say 94 might be just a little bit better than this one, but I'm going to give this one the same rating I gave 94. I'm going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. I still enjoyed it. I just think the first half takes too long to get to the point. And then the second half is just so much better and so much more fast paced. But yeah, seven and a half out of 10 for Fear Street Part 3. Have you sat down and watched this yet? It's on Netflix right now. You can watch it if you have Netflix. Let me know down below what you thought of it. If you have watched it, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video. I agree. would appreciate that. I'll be back probably on Sunday. I'm thinking that video's going to drop for Friday 13th Part 3 in 3D. I shot a pretty cool intro last night. That'll be in the front end of that review. Until then, I hope you're all doing well out there. And I'm just going to leave you with bye.